Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we'll be talking about a very interesting altcoin called Ripple and its native cryptocurrency XRP. So I'll explain to you what this is and how it works and we'll also take a look at the price section at the moment. But before we get to it, uh, make sure to like and subscribe and also leave a comment down below if you have any questions about the video. So I assume that you already know what altcoin means, but let's discuss it a bit. Altcoins are alternative cryptocurrencies that were launched after Bitcoin's success. So they generally project themselves as better replacements for Bitcoin and are trying to target any drawbacks that Bitcoin has. So many of these altcoins are built based on the basic structure provided by Bitcoin and most of them are peer-to-peer -peer and require a process of mining. But of course, altcoins, even with many overlapping features, very widely from one another and the altcoin that i want to talk about today is ripple so what is this and how does it actually work so the concept behind ripple predate bitcoin by four to five years and in 2004 ripple pay was developed as a way to provide secure payment options to members of an online community via a global network and six years after the blockchain-based payment system known as XRP was started. So what is this Ripple exactly? Ripple focuses on improving the existing and fragmented traditional banking system. And it does that by unifying a network of independent banks and payment providers with a standardized protocol to communicate and send low-cost immediate payments worldwide. It's so also the company uh, initially introduced three main products for money transfers between banks and those products are XRapid, which is a liquidity product, XVIA, which is a payment application programming interface and XCurrent, which is a real-time settlement system. So how does this Ripple work? There are two main components that comprise Ripple and the first one is Ripple in its entirety and it provides a real-time gross settlement system, currency exchange and remittance network. So the platform, which is supported by its blockchain payment protocol, uses RippleNet to facilitate instantaneous transactions between financial entities. Uh, RippleNet, which is the second component, is the distinct network of payment facilitators and global banks that help streamline communication and allows participants to send and receive payments seamlessly through Ripple's distributed platform. RippleNet also provides a framework and a set of rules called the Ripple Transaction Protocol and also applications can connect to the XRP ledger and while well, anyone can connect to this ledger, only a few trusted validators approve transactions and those are mostly well-known banks and financial institutions. And as of this March, uh, this network could process up to 1500 transactions per second with a really, really small fee. So this is much faster than Ethereum and much faster than Bitcoin too. So I want to talk about this XRP that I, that I mentioned. So XRP is actually the native cryptocurrency of this XRP ledger, which is a public blockchain that uses the federated consensus algorithm and that differs from the proof of work and proof of stake mechanisms as participants in the Ripple network are known and trusted by each other, which is based mainly on reputation. Also, there is a unique node list, and that is a list of nodes that network participants trust. So XRP can be used to provide on-demand liquidity or act as a bridging currency to settle cross-border transactions in less than five seconds and at a fraction of the cost of traditional transfers. And what is also interesting about this cryptocurrency is that XRP cannot be mined and no new tokens will ever be created. So that is because the founders issued the entire supply of 100 billion XRP tokens upon the ledger's launch in 2012. So to help the business scale, the founders allocated 80 billion tokens to Ripple and pocketed the remaining amount. Also additional XRP can still be circulated on secondary markets whenever Ripple decides to sell coins from its pre-mined supply. Also, there are XRP tokens held in escrow and they are deemed undistributed with the rest accounting for the circulating supply. Any unsold so tokens are returned to this escrow and redistributed at a later 
date so that is something about this uh, xrp cryptocurrency and of course as any other cryptocurrency there are lots of advantages and also lots of drawbacks to it and i want to talk about some of them so you can decide if you do actually want to invest in this one so some of the advantages of ripple and xrp is that it is fast it is efficient and it has transparent payments with an added liquidity tool to help streamline the settlement process also xrp settlement speed is faster as i said than bitcoins or ethereum's and the xrp network can handle just as i said up to 1500 transactions per second uh, those are some of the pros and also some of the cons are that triple net is not wholly decentralized compared to other public blockchains so that is some kind of a problem and also because its products are tailored for big financial institutions there is little practical relevance for retail users and a large majority of xrp is held actually by ripple so the tokens price could be easily manipulated or also negatively influenced by saturating the market with large sales so those are some of the pros and the cons and at the end i want to talk about the price action a little bit and see uh, what's going on with the market at the moment so as you can see after this consolidation period here the price went bearish uh, all the way down to this point and since then we can see that the price is really ranging and we are experiencing some lower highs and some lower lows and uh, we do have some kind of support here on this level and a resistance point right here and I can only expect to see some price swings if we break through this uh, resistance point. At the moment it's just really arranging and nothing major is happening. So what I'd like to see and what I uh, expect maybe to see in the future is that if we do go up here and break through this resistance point and we go down back to it and making it our support level uh, later, uh, we can expect, expect to go to some uh, much higher values uh, first here to this checkpoint and again we'll see in the future what will happen so that is it for the market review and i hope you enjoyed watching and as i said make sure to like and subscribe for more crypto content and also leave a comment down below with your thoughts on the video at the end i just want to say that i'm not a financial advisor and any investments you make on your own liability so thanks for watching and see you soon